So this news kind of surprised me a bit that apparently Halo Infinite is a profitable game for Microsoft and it has been for quite some time, according to one prominent insider. 400 million, bro. This is one of the biggest flops in the history of gaming for a very long time. Very long time. Sure, yeah. People are saying Halo Infinite. People are still playing Halo Infinite and there's 500 million for Halo that. Infinite's profitable now. It's profitable. Is it really? Where'd you get that yeah, from? I, I, people. Sources. Oh shit! Halo Infinite's profitable now. Yeah, it's it's been profitable for a while. Yeah. Oh I mean, like shit! Microtransactions all over the place. It's oh, gonna happen, right? Shit. Halo Infinite's um, profitable now. Yeah, it's that's, profitable. Um, but I bought a shit ton there, so then that makes. Yes, that's credible insider Jez Corden coming in with some more Halo information. Pretty much everything he said about Halo, for the most part, has pretty much been on point and accurate. I do remember there was a thing back then a couple of years ago about Halo switching to Unreal 5 and there was some confusion about that, but it sounds like that's actually happening too, but it just they people thought it was happening for Infinite at that time. But it's interesting to hear that Halo Infinite is a profitable game now. Like, how is that even possible? Because we know the rumors of Halo Infinite's cost, right? Saying it's the most expensive video game project ever, or at least somewhat, at least for the reported $500 million budget. This was never officially confirmed, but this was the information that, the best information that we got, and we people ran with it, and it's never been disproven. So pretty much, if it would have, you know, we probably would have heard about it because I think it's every leak with Halo happens, and so then, Something would have gone out about that if it wasn't an actual true statement, which seeing game budgets nowadays would make a lot of sense, especially with the recent news of Concord of all games costing $400 million to make, and Sony has literally made no money off of this game, which is just wild. I think that's what they were talking about in that video clip, saying like, that was a huge flop. Like, we haven't really seen anything that crazy. And like, at least people are still playing Halo, right? You can't really say that about Concord. But it's not like we're swimming in the player bases over here as, you know, we'd all seen the Steam numbers here, obviously. This isn't the entire picture of the game, but you see the general trends of the population just dwindling slowly over time to where now an average population of around 2,200 people playing Halo Infinite compared to, say, like the first few months of the game being out, right? Like... Seen like in January, 20, an average of 23,000 people back in January 2022. So there has been quite a drop off with this game. So it makes you wonder like, okay, especially with also 343 stating that they are moving away from Halo Infinite would make you think that, okay, this game is a lost cause. Like why even bother developing for it or anything? Well, seems like apparently it's a profitable game, which makes you go like, how's that even possible? And honestly, I think it's just because of one, of the insane amount of microtransactions that are within the game right now. And one, obviously you have the Operation Pass, right? Which is 500 credits, 50% from what the season passes were, uh, but they do get these more regularly, right? So we do get these season passes, or, or sorry, these Operation Passes about monthly. So they're actually probably generating more revenue off of these passes than they were previously than with the season passes being $10, right? Or a thousand credits. I think the big obvious one, right, is clearly the shop, right? I mean, it's where all the cool customization is, right? You can't earn any of this by just playing the game. You have to spend cold, hard cash that you worked hard for to then just spend on. <laughs> and, you know, that's where pretty much a lot of this stuff is like a lot of people buy a lot of these items, right? Remember the uh the halo ce armor set just the sale of the ce armor set alone had halo infinite jump up 47 spots on the steam top selling charts by revenue just because of the armor set that's in the store here so a lot of people are buying a lot of things in here but i don't even think this really even equates to the reason why it's profitable right like even you have the hts stuff you know that stuff is relatively popular pretty solid customization as well but i just i don't think this is the real reason why the game is now considered prof profitable and has been profitable for a while. And I think mostly that comes down to the lack of <laughs> development going into Halo Infinite. And the guy we showed earlier, Jess Corden, confirmed this. Because in a retweet here from Mint Blitz saying, if Halo Infinite is profitable now, then how come there hasn't been stuff like weapons, vehicles, and sandbox items added? And I was like, well, that's probably probably because people moved off of the game as our main focus. And also Jess Corden says, doesn't mean it's a ton of profitable, plus they're investing in the next game. Meaning the reason why it's profitable is because <laughs> they're not really developing for the game. Like, yeah, there are developers 
working on Halo Infinite. I'm not trying to downplay that at all. But, you know, clearly uh, there's been a big focus on Forge and the Forge community, which been, I feel like they've been pushed to their absolute limits that they can handle when it comes to uh, games, you know, for Halo Infinite. Uh, because they're working for free and they're just like only getting paid in like clout. It makes me think about stuff like this though, right? Like the Falcon, there's so much cut content that's in Halo Infinite that's like 90% there and you see it's that extra 10% to get it across the finish line to get it ready for the masses to then come in and play and enjoy. And the people are just not there at 343 working on Halo Infinite to make something like that happen, right? Which is just, incredibly sad because we've all we've wanted this falcon to be put into halo infinite for the longest time like this is one of my all-time favorite vehicles in halo it would be such a cool addition to the sandbox and all the vehicles that you can play around with in halo infinite as well it honestly would probably bring back a few thousand people just to play around with this vehicle alone because one leaning on nostalgia which seems to be the biggest selling point of halo as a franchise at this point and two it's like it's a really cool vehicle. Like it's basically like a Warhog in the air. How's that not amazing, right? <laughs> and there's so many other things like the double barrel shotgun that has like the gravity hammer. We've seen that a ton. Uh, there's also like a light machine gun kind of weapon lights from like the Banished that was cut as well. There's so many different things that we'd love to see be put in the game, but we know it's just not going to happen because well, like they're, they've moved on, right? Even 343 has stated this. On the kind of funny podcast here, Sketch pretty much explains the whole deal right here. I'll just play it for you guys so you can see it. Thing to say on that front for quite a while, but, you know, I mean, Infinite, as good as it is, and as more great things there are still to come, um, the studio has ambitions that, that reach beyond Infinite, and I'm very, very excited and energized to sort of take all the cumulative 25 years and all the learnings from Infinite and, and apply that to what could be next. And this is something we've been talking about on the channel for months now at this point. Like, yeah, 343 are working on something new. We do know that there has been a Halo game in production in some level since 2022. We've seen that, we've confirmed that with LinkedIn profiles and also with statements like this from Sketch that things have been in the works for some time now. They're hiring people again at 343 to build the team back up for whatever the next release will be could be or whenever that could happen again as halo fans we just have to keep on waiting when it comes to getting our halo content <laughs> but you know it is where it is and then we are where we are right now at the moment but this was just something about a headline i just saw that really kind of caught my attention and kind of surprised me honestly like i didn't think halo infinite was even a profitable game because you would think like if it was why move away from it but i think also not only it's just that like there really is a lot of issues when it comes to just like getting people to play getting people excited about infinite has been so tarnished in its uh in reception from the community and also from the back end from what i've heard personally from developers and we've seen from multiple sources that the reason why 343 have moved on from infinite even if it's profitable right now not crazy profitable but you know functioning profitability right there that the engine of space is incredibly difficult to work with uh, I've, we've heard that multiple times over. I've heard it personally from devs who have reached out to me as well. I want to talk about it. And that's the main reason why they're moving away from Infinite. It's not because like the gameplay doesn't work or they can't make enough money off of it. It's really that like what they want to do with Halo, they can't really do it with Slip Space because it takes so long and it's so grindy and difficult to work with. And like we saw recently with Hidden Experience video, uh, talking about a big pain point, pain point of development is the 18 month contract system that Microsoft works with. Again, that's not just 343's issue, that's Microsoft across the board. If you're a contractor through Microsoft, you have 18 months you can work there and you have to take six months off. And so basically, I feel like a lot of people have used Halo as like a good starting point to get themselves into the industry, right? If you want to start developing uh, video games and want to get a nice full time job, start working on Halo and launch your career from that, which doesn't really feel like that should be the case, right? I feel like Halo should be a game where people want to get there, get there and stay there and work, which it definitely is. But the problem is the way the work culture is over Microsoft that it's very difficult to get that permanent full-time job. We've lost so many talented, passionate, 
huge Halo fan developers at 343 due to the contract system out over there, which is just a pain to see. And I'm curious to see what they're going to do next to press because that's not changing at all. That's like a legitimate hard set Microsoft policy. So you're either going to have to hire more full time people or you're going to think a smaller scale type of game. And it just depends on what Pierre and the team over at 343 want to accomplish for the next Halo game. But I just wanted to tell you guys this information. Thought it was kind of interesting. A uh, little headline there for you guys. If you made this far in the video, Green Hearts always appreciate it. Leave a comment down below what you guys want to see next on the channel. Check out these videos right here. If you missed any content from me recently, I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.